Hey, 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 what's up? Dr. Vong here, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. I'm here with the kind coronavirus community. This is our kind coronavirus community. We are here to talk about the science behind coronavirus and leave politics out of it. Now, some of you guys might be like, why is he talking about Trump if he's saying it's not about politics? Well, he's the man of the hour. I, I, if it was a Democrat, if it was Biden, if it was Obama, it would be called, is Obama out of the woods? Is Biden going to die from coronavirus? He's just a man of the hour. This is not political. I'm just giving you what is um, the, the science behind the claims, okay? So let's get that straight. We're here to talk about science. If you're here to make a, a bunch of BS bullshit sayings about politics, just get on down the road and somebody can tag me and I can block people and stuff like that. It'll be really cool. We are the kind coronavirus community. We're here to talk about the science behind it. I don't really care about your political leanings. I don't have a feeling politically one way or the other. I just know we better fucking win by landslide. Uh, November 3rd, either party, I don't care which party, but either party better win by landslide. If we were kind of wishy-washy in the middle, uh, U.S. is in trouble. So um, I'm Dr. Duck Vong, retired bariatric surgeon. I have a big uh, bariatric following that's for people trying to lose weight. Um, you might recognize me from the TLC show, 900 Pound Man Race Against Time, where I went to Guam to try to help a man who was 900 pounds. Now, why is a bariatric surgeon talking about coronavirus? Well, simply because the number one risk factor for poor outcomes with coronavirus is actually obesity. It's not age, it's obesity. And there have been several... Um, uh, studies, a couple of studies that, and articles that have come out this week uh, linking obesity with poor outcomes. So that's why I still do this. And primarily, it's been the bulk of what I've had to talk about. Now, I was doing um, them more frequently back in the spring, but quite honestly, I got tired of the freaking haters and uh, they're not even real haters. I, I think they're fake, mostly fake accounts. Just ignore them, guys. I promise you. We're just going to talk about the science behind this. So this summer, I started doing this kind coronavirus community and uh, trying to just talk about the science. So I want to talk about uh, President Trump. Is he cured? Uh, he's, he claims, he's like, I'm cured of coronavirus or I might be cured or whatever. He uses a C word. <laughs> Not that C word. You are nasty. Not that C word. A different C word. Cured. Cured. And I want to talk about the, the medical lingo behind that. And I want to talk about specifically the recommendations. If you, just like President Trump, what the current recommendations are, if you get catch coronavirus, uh, we talked to last time about isolation uh, versus um, uh, the quarantine, what the difference was. So we're going to break down this uh, lingo for you. I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know what you want to hear, antibodies, T cells. I'm going to talk about your immune system. We're going to really kind of deal more with the science. What's really kind of happening inside Trump's body right now, whether or not, um, if we, we, we kind of have to assume a few things, the, the guidelines, the, the, the information that they've told us, and I will, um, and recapture that, uh, from what his physician says. I'm not, I don't care if it's Fox news. I don't care if it's CNN or NBC. I'm going to recap what his doctor actually said and i'm not sure you can believe everything his doctor said but he is held to a certain standard so while we're waiting for some more people to come in uh tell me where you're watching from and um and we'll get i'll get your name on the screen hit share for me we're gonna help some people we gotta all band together guys we have to all band together in order to get past this right it's not political the coronavirus does not care who you vote for the coronavirus does not care if you're red state or blue state I want to go back to restaurants too, guys. I want to go back to bars. I have a 28 year old girlfriend. I want to show her off and she's hot. So I want to go show her. I just had a birthday last week and that kind of helps because I know, um, you know, I know this timeline because it, it happened on my birthday, October 1st. So I'm 48. I have a 28 year old girlfriend. I, I want to take her out. I want to show her around. You know, we have a four year old daughter. We want to, I want to have a good, you know, um, be able to take my kid out to the park and everything like that. Um, uh, and so we just got to get over this guys. It's it, the, and the other thing is coronavirus doesn't even care what country you're in. So people are really dumb. I, I, I you're a special type of stupid. If you think that the coronavirus is going to go away after November 3rd, as if, as if we're the only country affected. And part of the problem, the people, idiots who say things like that, like, Oh, coronavirus is going away after November 3rd on November 4th. Just watch. It's going to go away. 
Like they don't even, they, they've never seen a picture of the globe before. They probably belong to flat earthers and they probably, they've never heard of a country called, uh, you know, like uh, the European Union or France or Spain, a country called Italy, that kind of ate shit and country called India that's about to go, uh, you know, go bonkers here uh, in a few. So um, they couldn't even find, find a continent of Africa on the map. I mean, this is really stupid. So you're dealing with some special store, sort of stupidity, but not here, not you guys, not the 800 of you guys watching. Tell me where you're watching from. Prove to me, prove that we are internationally famous here. Irene is in the house. Sarasota, Jessica Allen's in the house, right? Oh, I saw Brazil. Where is it? What's up? Happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, Toronto, Jan from Toronto. See, Canada is in the house. Crescent City, California, Melody, Pample. Oh, Gulfport, you dodged a bullet. Oh, prayers to um, everybody there in Louisiana. Missouri's in the house. Oop, Gold Coast. I was just there, Jill. Two years ago, I was in the Gold Coast. Quebec, Canadians watching. Look at that. Toronto, Texas is in the house. Australia is a country. Shout out. Oh, Arizona's in. Sorry, Dallas. It went by too fast. Oh, check that out. Jennifer Matthews, Okinawa, Japan. Mr. Miyagi's from there. Accra, New Jersey. What's up, David Stewart? Hello, hello. Saskatchewan. That reminds me of the Muppets movies. Proving right along in search of good times and good news. Elves. What's up? United Kingdom is in the house. Lakeland, Florida is in the house. Atlanta is watching. Catherine's watching on YouTube. See that? New Jersey. What that Michael Horn? You looking fierce there, man. Michael Horn, this message just for you. New Jersey's about to go on fire with coronavirus. You guys about to get a second peak. You up there um, with New York City. It's it's on like Donkey Kong. Brian, Hanoi, Vietnam. What's up? I'm from Fuwak, bud. Well, that's where I, 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 I immigrated from. Fuwak. So thank you, Ashton. Appreciate that. The Bahamas is in the house. Look at this. Internationally famous. Ashley, my girl. Hot damn, hot damn. All right. Birmingham, Texas. It's own country right there, right? Denisa, am I right? I'm currently in Houston, Amarillo. I just drove through there on my way to uh, Albuquerque. London, David. Stay safe. London is in trouble, David. London is in trouble. Um, so in Kentucky, Bobby. Definitely. Florida Keys. That's on my bucket list to go. So do me a favor. Hit share. Um, not your friend's share. <laughs> not the singer share. Hit the share button. Hit the like button. I appreciate that. Melvin is in Canada in the house. Bronx. Stephanie Rogers in the house. What is up? Northern Wisconsin is in trouble. Talk about that. What's up? What's up? Upstate New York. The best is in the house. Vicky Murphy, one of my fans from Australia, is watching. Thank you. Bonjour, Benoit. Benoit, Montreal, watching from uh, on YouTube. Belfast in the house. What's up, Anthony? You're in Belfast? That's awesome. Montana. I was on my way to Montana, but I stopped in Wyoming. I never quite made it past Yellowstone. Um, so, uh, ooh, look, check that out. Leo, ship at sea. What's up? That's awesome. Uh, hello. Oh, I had somebody say they love me. Here we go. Lynn, Ontario cases are rising. Love you, doctor. Stay safe, Lynn, man. You'll be all right, brother. Nebraska is on fire. Cases going up. Staten Island, Smyrna. Be careful. My Canadians are watching. Ontario. All right, we're at the nine-minute mark. One more minute. We'll go. Elaine Perry from British Columbia, BC. I just sent some COVID rapid tests there. I'll talk about that real quick uh, here in a second. All right. No, 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 no. Can't do that. That's not allowed. Good old Houston on the house. Yeah, baby. Christy Sims, I'm in Houston. I'm over here in Bel Air, baby. Where are you watching from? Edmonton. Edmonton Oilers, watch out. Uh-oh, Indiana Beach. What's that? What's up, Virginia? Wilma Ruby. Uh, right. There it's coming. You just believe me. Will you believe me? Um, Texas. Portland, Texas. What's up? Oh, my God. Oh, Jessica Allen, we all love you. Oh, man, you're so nice. No love. You guys were spared. You guys were spared. 504. Boy, Hawaii. That's all my bucket list to go to. Here, let me show you guys something. My bucket list. You see that? 
I got to do it. I'm doing Alaska cruise, Belize, Bora Bora, Fiji, Sweden, Canada, all the U.S. national parks, U.S. trains, U.S. river boats, Japan, Vietnam, Switzerland. My daughter put a bunch of hearts up. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about Trump real quick. Um, ooh, the Netherlands is in the house. What's up, Helene? That's awesome. Hey, you know how we get past this? I put together these COVID rapid tests for you guys, these rapid tests. They, you just prick your finger and uh, it gives you results in 15 minutes, 10, 10 minute results. You read the test in 10 minutes. It gives you results. It's like a pregnancy test, if, except you don't piss on it. It gives you a line, a little red line. I don't know if y'all can see that a little red line. Uh, this is a blue line because um, this is our fresh test. You just put blood sample in there, some buffer solution and uh, read the results in 10 minutes, like a pregnancy test. It gives you a line if you're positive. IgG, IgM, I sell these kits. You can check these kits. You can check that out. The best way to do is to um, message me on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. Send me a message. Say, I want a rapid test kit. I wholesale them to you $50 a test, $50 one of these kits, minimum order of 40. So that's $2,000. I, I want to be very clear about it, but it's got everything you need. You do it at home. You, this is like you test your whole family. Now grandmothers can come visit. You can have Thanksgiving. You can have Christmas parties. You can sell these. These are selling online for about $150 each, about $150 each. You can get them from me for wholesale $50. I could create a website and do this before I do this. I might create a website where I sell it myself for $125, $150, but I'd rather you get it from me for $50 and you sell it for $100. I tell people sell five for $500, $5 for $500, $100 each. And you'll double your money. Does that make sense? Double your money. So I use this myself. I test myself about every two weeks. I test uh, Erica, my girlfriend. I test my neighbor. I have one family that's two doors down. They have a seven-year-old daughter who's like really good friends with my four-year-old daughter. So I test him. He takes care of my house when I'm out. He checks on it, things like that. So we, so I test them for free. So I use this for my family. I use this for my 14-year-old. So I use it for Erica's mom. Get a hand. Just message me on drvong.com. I'm sorry, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. I might do a website where you can order. All right, let's talk about Trump. Is Trump sick or not? Is Trump sick or not? Is Trump cured? Okay. So the first thing I want to want to uh, put out is this. Trump uh, came down with coronavirus. Okay. Oh, no. I, let, me, let me redo that. Trump and COVID-19. Okay, so I want to talk about some terminology real quick, guys. So this is super important, the terminology. Trump had COVID-19. So COVID-19 is the disease. The actual virus is um, SARS-CoV-2. SARS, because that's it's a type of um, uh, SARS virus, coronavirus, uh, CoV, coronavirus 2, because it's the second one, okay? So that's the actual virus's name is SARS-CoV-2. He caught SARS-CoV-2 and he came down with COVID-19. Now, um, for all the people who think that it's fake, he didn't really have it. Um, no, we know he had it. We know he, he caught it. He tested positive. He has a physician that tested, you know, we are bound by licensure. Doesn't matter that he's the president's doc, uh, doctor but you're, you are bound by licensure, you know, to report things relatively accurately within HIPAA. So we know he has COVID-19 and uh, we know he was admitted to Walter Reed hospital. He was a patient there in the presidential suite. So he's not treated like a normal person. Obviously he's the president of the United States, but this, put this to rest. Anybody who thinks it's fake, it's a political thing. He's trying to get attention for the campaign. That's a special level of stupid. You are just a, it's just weird. You can't argue with people like that. You can't talk to people like that. So we know he has COVID-19. Okay. Now, number two, Trump was treated early and with very strong experimental drugs. Okay. And I did a pre, I did a previous video on this. I broke down all of his treatments, but he was treated very early and with very strong experimental drugs. 
with drugs that would normally be left for people who are sick in the ICU intubated. So I did a previous video where I broke down his treatments. He, he tested positive. He started having symptoms on Thursday, October 1st. How do I know? It's my birthday. October 1st was my birthday. I turned 48. Oh, shit. <laughs> Two years away from a colonoscopy. God damn it. <laughs> Two years away from a colonoscopy. Hey, I used to do colonoscopies. I could do one on myself. I just like put it, put it up there, doc. Oh, no. More sedation, nurse. More sedation. Um, anyway, so uh, October 1st was my birthday. And when I woke up on Friday morning, that was Thursday and Friday morning at, at around midnight, 1 a.m., uh, he said that he and First Lady tested positive for coronavirus. So then the very next day, Friday, he was taken to the hospital that evening. And um, we know he had supplemental oxygen. We know that he was started on some uh, other treatments, right? And I broke those down, aspirin, zinc, things like that, and vitamin D. And th this is all public information. So this, I know I'm not, I'm not his treating physician, that sort of stuff. But then on Saturday, he was started on Regeneron, which is not even emergency use act. It is so with coronavirus, novel coronavirus, novel means new. So, um, uh, so there are really no FDA approved medicines per se. They're all on emergency use. Even remdesivir is emergency use. So he was started on remdesivir. Uh, which is usually reserved for uh, intubated patients. Um, then um, he was given Regeneron. Regeneron is the antibodies. So what this company does, the company is actually called Regeneron. That's the name of the company. And um, they uh, uh, he was given their antibody cocktail. They've identified two candidates from people who've recovered from coronavirus. They spun out their blood. They they identified you know out of a thousand. Um, possible antibodies. They have identified their top two candidates. They um, duplicated them. That's called a monoclonal because it's the same. They're duplicating the same antibody over and over again. So it's a monoclonal. It's like, uh, you know, copiers, when you make uh, Xerox copies, it's a copy of the same piece of paper, right? So it's multiple copies. That's monoclonal antibody. They actually had two candidates. They mixed it into a cocktail. And that's what they are. Uh, they gave President Trump. Now that's not even on the EUA. That was um, his doctors had to call the company Regeneron and ask for what's called uh, compassionate use, which is actually a piece of legislation that I think Donald Trump um, got passed. Quite honestly, that uh, you know they he or at least ease restrictions restrictions on compassionate use so then the company said of course it's our president so um they let his doctors administer regeneron now the um chief scientific officer for the company has said that regeneron is really used best for people who are either immunocompromised and cannot mount a response or uh, patients who, for whatever reason, early on the course have not developed antibodies for whatever reason. And so you're giving the antibodies. It's a one-time hit. It's, it's, um, it's going to get used up, right? It's gas. So think about your car. You put gas in your car. You use it up. The gas tank goes down. It runs out. It's out of gas. You run out of gas. Your car stops working. So Regeneron, this medicine, is antibodies. It is a cocktail of antibodies. Once your body uses it up, either... Either it gets um, absorbed or processed or broken down, or some of those antibodies will attach to coronavirus cells and keep them from entering the cell. That's how it works. Um, uh, it attacks the virus. It blocks the virus from entering your cells. And once they get all used up, it's like you're out of gas. It's a one-time dose. It's a one-time hit. Remdesivir is a five-day course. And then he was started on prednisone, which is a steroid. It's a common steroid, IV steroid. We use it in, for lots of inflammation, lots of things, arthritis, lots of different diseases, autoimmune diseases. Um, so dexamethasone, right? But the studies with dexamethasone and, and coronavirus, there it showed that it's not helpful for, for people who have mild symptoms. Remember the press release was he only has mild symptoms. Well, you, we now we know that's a freaking lie because, because, you know, um, 
he had supplemental oxygen. He was, he had high fever, not low grade fever. I don't know if y'all caught that, but on Saturday they were saying he had low grade fever, low grade fever. And then on Sunday, um, his Dr. Connolly, Sean Connolly, his physician, I guess was kind of bothered having to repeat all these questions, answers. He, he said, you know, he, he was short of breath. He was on oxygen and he had high, high grade fevers. We decided to admit him to the hospital. So the truth comes out. He actually had high grade fevers um, and was not feeling well. And, um, and um, so, and was, needed a supplemental oxygen. He was having trouble breathing. So they admitted him to the hospital. I, why they wouldn't just tell us the truth, say, we're going to take care of our doctor, our, our president and, and say, hey, look, he's recovered. Right. Okay. So prednisone is only given for patients who are intubated or in the ICU who are not doing well. In fact, the study linking prednisone and coronavirus showed that if you give prednisone to people who um, were not that sick, had mild symptoms, it actually showed no benefit. So the fact that they gave it to him, they made a team decision to give him all these treatments. Yes, he's our president. Um, but it really shows he was probably a lot sicker than, than they let on. Now, here's the problem. Um, well, he was treated early and with very strong medicines. If you're 74, if you, Johnny, you know, Daniel, uh, Consuelo, Felicia, uh, you know, if, if you guys were 74 years old and came positive, they wouldn't say, they wouldn't give you those tests. They wouldn't give you those, not those tests, those treatments. They wouldn't give you those treatments like he had. So they treated him very, very aggressively. All right. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. This is why this is science, right? Um, there's no way to tell which treatment was the most effective. And this goes back to just freaking basic science. This is why we do studies. Double-blinded, placebo-controlled, double-blinded, um, large numbers, you know, 1,000, 4,000, 2,000 people in each arm. You know, one gets the drug, one arm gets the drug, one arm gets the placebo. And it's prospective, it's randomized, it's controlled. And that's when you tease out all the data and then you, you do it for a long time. One person, my uncle Billy, my uncle Billy took an aspirin and he survived it. See, that doesn't, that doesn't help us because just as easily Dr. Vaughn, you know, my, my, my aunt Mary went outside with her hair wet and got cold and caught the, caught the virus. If you go outside with your hair wet, you'll catch the virus. No, it doesn't. Science doesn't work that way, right? A study of one does not does not mean shit. There's no telling which treatment was the most effective. In fact, there is a chance. You have to admit there is a chance. If they had done nothing, there is a small chance, a chance, a small chance. It's like dumb and number. You mean you are, you mean I have a chance? You know, like there is a chance he he could have recovered on his own. There's a chance he could have recovered on his own. So we don't know. You can't say without a doubt. So now, as common layman people tend to do, he's now running around touting Regeneron. Right or wrong? It's his prerogative. I'm just telling you what the man's doing. I'm not judging. I'm just saying he's saying, I think I've been cured. I feel great. I was given this medicine. Dude, truth of the matter is he does not know which one worked. It could have been the friggin' vitamin D. It could have been the zinc. It could have been the oxygen. It could have been the, hey, hey, Don, sit your ass down. Hey, Junior, sit, sit your ass down and just chill for a little bit. Quit tweeting. It could be rest. Dude, rest is a form of treatment. I'm not being ugly. It could have been fluids because his doctor said he was dehydrated, right? His kidney function was a little high. He was dehydrated which happens. So it could just, it could have been the rehydration. We don't really know. Not with a study of one. He's a study of one, but he gets this compassionate use on Regeneron antibody. And, um, and now he's running around saying he's cured. Okay. I'm going to get to the cured part here in a second. What I want you to understand is that that's not how science works. That's not how it works. 
There's lots of people saying, I took this herbal supplement. It got me, it cured me. I took this, I took copper. Remember the copper bracelets? Who's old enough to fucking remember copper bracelets? You wear this copper bracelet. It has an ionizing effect and it cured me of cancer. And it cured me of arthritis and it cured me of my memory loss. Like, come on, dude, come on, right? You just don't know. That's not how science works. That's all I'm saying. It's not how science works. So um, the data on Regeneron will come out later. Uh, I will tell you that the people that I'm hearing from is that Regeneron might be slightly beneficial. Might be slightly beneficial. Okay. Remdesivir is not a magic bullet. It has a slight improvement in in the length of stay. It has a slight improvement in the length of stay. It's not a magic bullet, right? So it could be a combination of all of these. And in fact, those are that's a different type of test where you test you can test um, you know you can test Regeneron alone or Regeneron with dexamethasone or a third arm might be Regeneron dex, dex Regeneron dexamethasone and remdesivir all three of those and then you can compare and sometimes the science comes out weird sometimes like the person who got nothing done does the best sometimes like all three all three drugs, we don't know it, but maybe they counteract each other and it's not as successful as just the two drug combination. You just never know. You never know. That's why it's called science. So to go around and say that you're cured, especially if you're going to promise like, I'm going to make these treatments available for you for free. Come on. It's just not, don't fall for it, guys. It's not true. It's just not true. And I don't care how who you've... Listen, before you sit here and think I'm I'm hating on Trump, I'm just telling you like it is. If this person, if if the president were a Democrat, I would say the same thing. If the president happened to be a Democrat and he stands on a balcony or he goes on a radio show and he says, this medicine cured me, I would say, no, no, it doesn't work that way. Science doesn't work that way. So um, I want to be very clear about that for those who are just walking you know, logging on now, which is, which is, which is the, you know, this is just not how science works. Okay. So number four, let's get to, so to, um, some stuff here. Doctors rarely, if ever use the word. See, this is the difference between being a professional trained licensed person versus a layman. Your doctor your physician, your surgeon will rarely, if ever, use the word cure. We do not cure HIV, which if you remember, is a virus. HIV is a virus, just like coronavirus is a virus. And we we don't say we cure HIV. Now, Magic Johnson, who remembers, you know, Magic Johnson, man? You know, one of the best point guards uh, in NBA history stood up in 1991. I remember cause I was a freshman in college and said, I have the HIV, I have HIV and he had to retire from playing professional basketball. And so that was 1991. Let's do the math Nine years, 20, that's 29 years. He's been living with HIV for 29 years. Back then it was a death sentence. So now actually HIV has become a chronic illness. Check that shit out. Hey, nudge your husband. Nudge your husband. Say like HIV is now a chronic illness, yo. Tommy boy, HIV is a chronic illness. You know, um, it's like diabetes or high blood pressure. We don't cure diabetes. You understand that, right? Your insulin, Uncle Billy, does not cure you of your diabetes. And no, it does not mean that you can eat your pecan pie just because you got an extra dose of insulin. What's wrong with you? You know, wear your mask. Quit wearing like down here. Quit wearing it like a chin strap. What's wrong with you, Uncle Billy? Come on. It's time to adult up, right? Because the truth matters is your doctors rarely, if ever, use the word, word cure. Um, you know, when I did my surgical oncology rotation, uh, we were very, I mean, we never said cured. We never said breast, you know, your breast cancer is cured. You've been cured of this cancer. You never know. Because the best you can say is this. The best you can say is this. Your cancer is currently undetectable. 
Cancer, just like HIV, starts with one cell, one virus, one cell. Cancer starts with one cell. There is no test on God's green earth that can detect one cell. Even when you can, if you can palpate a breast lump, you already have millions and millions of cells, millions and millions of cells that all started with one cell. You never, we never say you're cured from cancer, right? Even if we, uh, even if we like replace your hip, we never say you're cured from arthritis, right? Your hip pain is better, but that joint could give out in 10, 15, 20 years, depending on the surgery you had, right? So for that's the difference between a professional and a lay person. We don't run around saying that we cured a disease. I never tell my patients I cured them of their obesity. In fact, comment if you are one, if you are, um, if you follow me, you know, or you're one of my patients. I never say you're cured of your obesity. Your obesity at best is under control. Your obesity is a constant struggle. You're you're constantly trying to get better. You're constantly trying to improve your mindset. You try you're constantly trying to improve your relationship with food. You're constantly trying to improve like your your mind body connection. You're constantly trying to improve um, like your relationship with food. But but just because I did bariatric surgery or gastric sleeve or gastric bypass or a lap band or anything on you does not mean you're cured of obesity. We don't cure you of obesity. Your insulin shot does not cure you. Your metformin does not cure you with diabetes. Your high, your high blood pressure pill does not cure you of high blood pressure. It just helps you manage it. But the best one is to say HIV. Even with all the medicines we give HIV patients, even if their viral load is super low, we never tell them they're cured right even if their viral load is undetectable we don't tell them they're cured of hiv right so for you know i just sometimes with all due respect you got to be careful what who you're listening to right if you're if the professionals don't use the word cured why would you believe somebody who says this medicine cured me when i just explained it could have been any one of the medicines it could have been a combination of the medicines or it could have been none of them he could have gotten better by himself. So let's talk about what you guys are really concerned about. Is Trump still ages? Who wants to know that? This is really the big issue. At heart of what we're talking about is this. Is Trump still contagious? Because he wants to go out campaigning. He wants to go talk. Now, this is going to relate. It's not political post, but this has to do with if you came down with coronavirus, if you tested positive, should you be standing on a balcony singing, don't cry for me, Argentina? <laughs> if you had coronavirus and you recovered from COVID-19, should you marry uh, Beverly, Terry, should you, Simone, stand out? on your balcony sing, don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> right? Answer is probably not. Probably not. Is Trump still contagious? The answer is we don't really know. We don't really know. We only have guidelines. We only have guidelines. So let's do the time, the timeline. Okay. Um, current CDC recommendations. There really is no test to check for um, if you're still contagious, not really. I mean, the best is the PCR that kind that would say indicates it. Um, you know, you hear that word, is he shedding virus? Is he shedding virus? The truth of the matter is we're not absolutely sure. So we just have guidelines. So we'll talk about the current CDC guidelines. So what's, what's, what's the current guidelines? Well, the guidelines are from the CDC is that if you test positive and you had, you know what? I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Okay. Um, if you had severe symptoms, then you might need to isolate, not quarantine, but isolate. Isolate means you don't see people. You don't go out except to only doctor's visits, but even then you better call your doctor ahead of time. Um, so it's isolation. 
you should isolate from anywhere from 10 to 20 days. So hang tight with me. Let me share my screen with you and I will pull up the CDC guidelines. Can y'all see my screen? Comment if y'all can see my screen now. And here we go. Okay. So if you go to the CDC, this is the Centers for Disease Control. It was recently updated last month. Okay. Um, I think or I know I had COVID-19 and I had symptoms. So Trump knows he had COVID-19 and had symptoms. You can be around others after 20, 10 days since symptoms first appeared and 24 hours with no fever without the use of fever reducing medicines and no, and, um, and other symptoms of COVID-19 are improving. Okay. But here's the one. Okay. I was severely ill with COVID-19. I was severely ill with COVID-19. So we know Trump had a high fever. He was not feeling well. They admitted him to the hospital. He, he had trouble breathing. He needed supplemental oxygen. So I would say he was severely ill with COVID-19. Anyone who needs to be admitted, granted, he was president, so they took more precautions, but we know he was having trouble breathing. We know he had a high fever. We know he wasn't feeling well. Here it says, people who are severely ill with COVID-19 might need to stay home longer than 10 days and up to 20 days. So 10 to 20 days since symptoms appeared. Symptoms appeared, okay? So let's give him the benefit of the doubt, folks. Let's give him the benefit of the doubts and say he had mild symptoms, all right? So isolation for 10 days. What I'm gonna do is pull up my calendar. So can y'all see that? October 1st was my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, October 1st. There we go. There we go. October 1st. That was last Thursday um, at midnight, which is technically Friday morning, the 2nd. He tweeted that um, he, he had tested positive. But on the 1st, he was on a radio show or television show uh, interviewing, and he said that he was waiting on his coronavirus test because his intern uh, uh, his, his aide, White House aide had tested positive for coronavirus. So that's Thursday night. Now we know through reports, through his physician and his medical team, he actually had symptoms on Thursday. He had symptoms on Thursday. So at, at least by Thursday, we know it could be as early as Wednesday. I'm not here to spread conjecture. It's really okay. So let's just accept Thursday. Well, y'all count. It's 10 days after symptoms. One Thursday, one, two, three, you know, the eighth, the seven, ninth is eight. The tenth today is day nine. So the CDC would be day 11. And CDC guidelines says after 10 days. So you have to quarantine for 10, total of 10 days, which means Trump should not be in public until the 12th. That's per CDC guidelines. I'm just giving you the medical facts. I'm not making this political. I'm just telling you, if you follow the rules, the recommendations, whatever, at the earliest, Trump should, um, should not be out and about until, but should not be around people at the earliest on the 12th. We already have reports that he has been to the Oval Office, so he left the presidential suite where the residents in, inside the White House, the presidential residence, he should have been isolated there. Isolated, not quarantined, right? Isolated means he's the only one there. Of course, he's the president. He's, he'll get pampered by people, whatever. But he shouldn't leave the residence per his guidelines, his CDC guidelines. But we know that he's he's done court. He's held court in the Oval Office. And then today he went out on the balcony and if you haven't seen it, he went out on the balcony. He took off his mask today, not when he left the hospital, but today, roughly about you know four hours ago, he went out five hours ago. He went out on the balcony. He gave an 18 minute speech without his mask uh, to a crowd of people below him, like freaking a scene from Evita. And he's smiling, clapping, pointing, and he's spraying spraying coronavirus all over people below him. But Dr. Vong is six feet. He's up high. He's on the second floor. You ever heard of gravity? 
Why is it six feet this way? It's six feet when you sneeze this way. It's six feet out that way. Coronavirus is in droplets. Droplets is what? Droplets is water. The virus is in the water when you're <clears throat> when you're spewing, when you're singing, when you're praising, when you're lecturing, universities, I mean schools, right? When you're talking, when you're phonating. That's droplets <clears throat> coming out. Virus is in <clears throat> the spit. Have you ever been talking to somebody, especially when like you're on a date and like she's really cute and you say something too emphatically and you actually spit on their face? You, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's what he was doing. He was raining down coronavirus droplets on these people. Dr. Vong, they were set back. You know, I, I, okay, fine. I just would not be on, you know, at, in the front row. That's all I'm saying. And you project out and then gravity. Gravity, psh, you guys know gravity, right? Like, because the whole argument early on was, hey, you know, how, how long does it stay in the air? Gravity will make it fall down. Blah, blah. It'll be on surfaces, remember? Someone sneezes, it's going to drop down it's on surfaces. Now we fucking all bought Clorox wipes and spray down and wiping down surfaces. Well, what the fuck does that mean? Fall down. The droplets fall down onto your table surfaces, on your laptop, on your phone, on your tabletops, and you can't go to restaurants. And so now they have to wipe down the tabletops. Why? Because you're eating, chewing, and spitting down on the tabletops. Now they have to wipe down the table. And this dude is sitting on a balcony. And I don't care if it was a fucking Democrat or a fucking Republican. This Does this make sense to y'all? It doesn't matter the party. It's not the affiliation. It's the act. The act of it is so stupid stupid and i don't know who's dumber who's more stupid the dude on the balcony singing Vita or the crowd below him so yes without masks without face masks what the hell's wrong with people i said one time i said you know when you become an adult <laughs> it should be your goal that you know that you have a balcony that you can piss off of in the middle of the night, no one's watching, you know? Maybe there's a, a half moon up in the sky. I know I did this when I had my my house down on, on Galveston. I was in the canal and and uh, on the water and, and I could look out on my balcony deck and, and my boat lift and and uh, the canal water's going below me. And I was like, I'm 36 years old. I'm a surgeon. I made it, whipped it out, pissed off my balcony. <laughs> Uh, and then one of my friends came over and pissed off my balcony too when he stayed one night. That was a long time ago. That was <laughs> that was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. So if the man wants to like take off his mask and he's off the balcony, nobody's around him, he earned the right. He's earned the right. But not when there's a bunch of people gathered below him and he has and he's positive for coronavirus. It's irresponsible. It's stupid and irresponsible. And I don't know who's even dumber. Him, the person doing it, because it doesn't matter the party affiliation, the person doing it, person who did it, or the people in attendance, you know? So the fact of the matter is, chances are he is still contagious. Chances are he's still contagious. Who remembers in the early days? Who remembers in the early days when... Um, uh, back in April, if you tested positive before they would let you go back to work, you had to have not one, but two negative tests. You had to have not one, but two negative tests. And the White House will not tell us um, if it, his current positive, if he's positive or negative. And they will not tell us, um, the White House will not tell us when his last negative test was. Because there's going to be a shit downfall. Over 27 people in the White House have tested positive. Dr. Fauci came out and said this Rose Garden event announcing the Supreme Court nomination was a super spreader event. When has Fauci ever said that? Super spreader event. And now the White House says, we're not going to do contact tracing. Everybody who came to that event, no, we're not doing contact tracing. It's ridiculous. It's a joke. It doesn't matter the political affiliation. It doesn't matter what party. The way it's being handled is is medically irresponsible. 
medically irresponsible. And now he's talking about holding rallies in Florida. Dude, if you're in Florida and you're going to go to a Trump rally next week, next Monday, Tuesday, whatever, whenever he's doing it, and he doesn't have a negative coronavirus test and he's not willing to show you a negative coronavirus test, you deserve what you get, I guess. I don't know. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for your soul. You know, y'all get the idea. All right. If this tire. <laughs> Like, if this rant has been helpful, please hit share. Please tag somebody who needs to watch this, who needs to see it, who needs to understand um, and, and, and figure it out. At the very least, he should follow his, the CDC guidelines. And I showed it to you all. The CDC guidelines are a minimum of 10 days in isolation. Assuming you have no fever for 24 hours without of uh, antipyretics and um, other symptoms are improving. Your cough is improving. Your fatigue is improving. If you're, if you're still tired, you can't go out. If you still have a bad cough, you can't go out. Minimum of 10 days, right? Now, if you have a severe case of COVID-19, then the recommendation could be 10 to 20 days. It could be as long as 20 days per the CDC guidelines. Do the rules just apply to us and not to him? Not to this person? What's wrong? What's the deal here? What's the dealio? Okay. So I hope you enjoy this talk. What I want to do is if you, um, you can jump up now if you want, jump off now. If you're enjoying the conversation, I want to tell you about my, my COVID rapid test. So uh, I have a friend who has this company who can get COVID rapid test. These are the antibody tests, IgG, IgM. I've been telling people in my special group, my challenge group, since the summer, I'm like, y'all think that they're shoving shit up their nose. They are not shoving Q-tips up their nose. They have some other tests that they're doing that we don't know about. But they're making us do this shit up our nose and then, you know, stand in line for, you know, in our cars in the middle of the summer for three, four, five, six hours. Um, and to, to wait to get results in 5, 10, it got as high as 14 days. Who remember when it took 14 days to get a uh, coronavirus test back? It makes no sense for 14 days, right? So they've actually been doing rapid tests the whole time. They've been doing rapid tests. Now, there's different rapid tests. This is an antibody rapid test. You could have a nasal one. You could have um, an antigen one, the saliva one, right? So they're different rapid tests. They're not all the same. So... Trump, uh, Trump, the White House has been using the uh, saliva rapid test, uh, which is terribly inaccurate. It's not very accurate, but here's the key. They, they stopped doing all the other stuff, hand washing, social distancing, face mask wearing. They were not strict about that. Now the White House is a coronavirus hotspot. So testing is one part of it. But if you want to get beyond this, you have to test frequently. I test myself every two weeks about about every two weeks, depending on how active I am. Anyone I come in contact with, anyone who wants to come over and spend time with me. As I said, my uh, Erica's mom came over from Albuquerque for three weeks. I tested her when she got off the plane, watched her to see if she had any symptoms. She didn't have any symptoms. I gave her a test to go home with. She, she was here for three weeks. She went home. I said, test yourself in three days. There's a three-day window where you can be fa false negative. You can have it, but it doesn't detect it. That, and it doesn't matter what test. It could be the nasal, it could be the oral, it could be the antigen, it could be this antibody test. There's a three to five day window, three to five days, where you'll test negative. That's called a false negative. But the test also might not work. That's called a false positive. It gives you positive reading when you're really negative, in which case you have to retest. So the answer, if you fuckers want to get over this, the answer is we need more testing, more frequent, affordable, quick testing. So my friend can get these tests and, but he sells them to businesses and he, he sells like a thousand to businesses and says, Hey, um, we'll come, we'll bring out a nurse and we'll test all your employees because if whoever tests positive, cause you can stay in business, right? If you test positive, you pull them out of the workforce, you isolate them, you give, make them a test negative, whatever it is. And then you can keep working. You can keep your business going. Right. So you're avoiding shutdown. So he sells to these businesses. So anyway, I was introduced to him and I, and I was like, I was like, do you, do you have like, 
okay, so you get results in 10 minutes. He goes, yeah, you get results in 10 minutes. And I said, so do you send it to a lab? Like who, who do I send it to? He goes, no, you just read it. I'm like, you just read it. He's like, yeah, you just read it. It's like a pregnancy test. See, it's got a blue line. I'm trying to, let me see, see that? Sorry, the light, the glare. I got to figure this out. So it has a blue line. So you read it, just you, you put your specimen in here and you read it, there we go. Okay, in, in this first well, blood goes here, buffer goes here, and there's a blue line, that's the control line. The control line will turn red. That means um, you're a good test. And then, hold on, I'm trying to, this is embarrassing. <laughs> there we go. All right, so it says IgG. It has a G right there. That means it tests for IgG. That's the antibodies. And then IgM means active infection. The IgG tests for past infection and IgM tests for active infection. So this test will test for both positive active infection as well as past infection. So if you had it like back in August or July or August, you'll have the IgG antibodies or they're disappearing. We don't know yet. Stay tuned for that. IgM means you're positive. I'm telling you, if I give this to probably, you know, the White House, there's going to be a pot, the IgM is going to come up positive. Okay. So I said, you don't send this to a lab. He goes, no, you read it like a pregnancy test. I was like, you read it like a pregnancy test? He goes, yeah. And I said, well, why do you, why do you have to send a nurse there? He goes, well, because it's a finger prick. And I said, it's a finger prick? He goes, yeah, like blood sugar. I'm like, like blood sugar? He's like, are you? <laughs> He's like, why do you keep repeating everything I say? I was like, well, because I'm astounded, you know? And I was like, how long has these been around? And he's like, uh, they've been around for years, uh, you know? Like, we use we use rapid tests for all different other viruses, Ebola, things like that. He goes, but but um, they've had the, 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 the coronavirus one, SARS-CoV-2 one for, you know, since March. I'm like, since March? He goes, yeah. <clears throat> And why are we st sticking shit up our nose? Oh, he's like, I don't know. I was like, so tell me about it. He goes, it's just a finger prick. So basically you take this. If you're a diabetic, you know how these things work, right? You just boop, do a little finger prick, right? You just do a little finger prick. You get a drop of blood. You get a drop of blood. You drop it onto this little well right here, this, the square one right there. And then you take this buffer. To, and I have a little pipette. You drop a little pipette. You'll, you drop this buffer into this well. Right now you're, you're 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 pissed off you didn't pay attention to science, and so the 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 uh, buffer travels up and pulls the blood up and it reads and it and it picks up the antigens it, it picks up the antibodies it detects the antibodies so this is a COVID rapid test so I said I said you know what dude you should sell that for home use he goes I can't I said why not he goes. Well, because it, it has blood and we're required to, to have an, uh, any healthcare provider. You're a doctor. You can do it. Uh, I said, but I don't do it. He goes, no. I said, no, because like if somebody's a diabetic, I don't show them how to do this. I, I just send them, put them in a room and not even my nurse, but the, the MA, the medical assistant will show them how to check their blood sugars. Like they just prick it here and she shows them, put that on the test strip, put your test strip in the machine and it reads your blood sugars. It's just... And I'm like, this is the same thing that we use to check blood sugars. He goes, I know. I said, this should be a home home kit. He said, I know, but I can't do it. And I said, well, I'll fucking do it. He goes, you'd be the only person. I'm the only person for the 1,260 of y'all watching. I'm the only person who has the co cojones to put these together because this is what we need. All right. We need more and frequent. Let's see. Let me put that up here. So, I if I had a competitor, I would I would tell you to order from them. But I don't. I'm the only one. I put these little kits together. It has everything you need. I ship it to you. Um, I've actually taken extra precaution. Um, now because I've had trouble. People have been breaking it. UPS, not UPS, United States Postal Service have break been breaking into my shipments, man. They open it up and they look in there and they, they've been stealing one or two out. So I switched to FedEx, but let, let me show you here in a second. So you get this, 
It has an alcohol swab, so you swab off your finger. It has a Band-Aid if you need it. It has a pair of gloves if you want to wear a pair of gloves when you do this, or, or if you want to test your, your son or your spouse or a friend, you can put on gloves if you want. This has the, this is a different, it's the same thing, but this is the different, the finger prick. You just prick your finger and then it has the, the test and it has the, the buffer, right? So the test, the, the, um, it actually comes like this. You'll open up this test kit. It's one time use. Now, some people are going to go, well, how accurate? It can't be that accurate. Dude, these are 95% accurate, 95 to 97% accurate. Did you know the nasal swabs are only 70% accurate? The nasal swabs are only 70% accurate. Why? Well, then why are they making us do that, Dr. Vaughn? Because they decided, the experts decided, that's how you do it. You send it in a lab. Follow the money. These lab companies are getting paid a shit ton of money. No, Dr. Vaughn, they're free. No, they're not fucking free. You're not paying, but you're paying through your tax dollars. Trust me. They're billing the government. You're paying with your tax dollars. These, com these companies can't do this shit for free, right? Trust me, this is American capitalism. So, so they've already decided. And so they're gonna they're gonna partner with these lab cores, these lab companies, and get everybody gets their money. Now these, um, you do it at home, all right? So you drop your blood finger in here, your buffer. You read it in ten minutes. It gives you the real results if you're currently infected or if you've been infected in the past. This will give you the results, and then you know your status and you feel better. Now, if you're a grandmother who hasn't seen their grandbaby, you got to test. You got to test everybody. Um, I test everybody I come in contact with. I have a friend next door neighbor. He has a seven-year-old daughter. I have a four-year-old daughter. I test him. I test his wife. Um, they have a, a niece that just came over. I tested her. She was there. She isolated with them. She quarantined with them for two day, three days. Three days. I tested her. And she's negative, took her to the zoo today. Three to five day window. 95%, nothing is 100%, guys. Dr. Vaughn, what if someone sues you? Nothing is 100%. Nothing is 100%. So this is for home use. I put all these to you together for you. You put this and then um, you. I ship them to you. I've had to, I've had to switch from United States Postal Service. I double bag them. I put them in this bag, seal it. Put it into this FedEx envelope. This is how bad it's gotten. Tape it, and then once it's closed like this, and you guys have all had it, I tape across here because ain't nobody on FedEx going to open this. If they open this, they get in trouble. So I'm taping it across here so they can't say it came undone. And one, and if anyone dares to look inside, they're going to have to be willing to have enough balls to open up this bag. So this is what I've gone to. Because I used to ship it in brown boxes and you and and uh, uh, USPS FedEx overnight, dude. I I want the fewest hands on it, and I I'm double bagging it. I'm securing it. I put in here, uh, Erica and me, Erica and I, and and my neighbor. We bag it. I put in a little strip. We triple count it. We triple count the tests and we put a strip in there that says, we sign it, it says 20 tests, 40 tests, however many you order. And so you know exactly how many should be in there. That's how crazy this has gotten, yo. So you can find these, you can find the test, not the kits. Dr. V puts all these kits together. You're going to have to buy, you can find these tests online for about $150 each. $150, $150 US dollars. Okay. So I put these kits together. I wholesale them to you for 50 bucks minimum order of 40. Do hey yo, yo, pay attention. Do your math. Minimum order of 40. So that's a two thousand dollar um order, two thousand dollars, but you get 40 tests at fifty dollars each. You could easily resell them to your friends, your co-workers for a hundred bucks. You're doubling your money plus. You are saving them from a, from you're saving them fifty dollars because these tests are going for fifty dollars each. But I'm the only one who puts the kits together. If you want everything easy, all, everything you need to self test at home, this is it. Do not use this to go back to work because your job has their own protocols. Do not use this to travel because the agent the um, the airlines are going to have their own requirements. If they hire, if they say you need a physician to sign off on it, then your doctor. Is going to have his own protocols. He'll have his own version of this, whether it's the blood test, the nasal swab, whatever, or she, your doctor will have a, a different thing. So don't use this for travel. 
Use this for peace of mind for your auto, your immune compromised loved ones, your, your gatherings, your Canadian Thanksgiving on Sunday, your Thanksgiving here, your gatherings. This is um, to tell, <clears throat> this will tell you if you have coronavirus versus influenza, the flu, flu season coming. You start coughing, you feel bad, you're sneezing. You're just like, oh my God, is this the flu? Is this allergies or is this coronavirus? This is the only way you have to do this. Now there's a new test that's coming out that just got emergency use that shows a difference that detects um, coronavirus versus the influenza, right? Influenza. And, and uh, it has to be done at a lab. It has to be sent to a lab. There is no home test to tell the difference. You have to see a doctor. This, I, I mail it right to you at home in this very nice med, FedEx box. This very nice FedEx box. You get it very secure now because I've gotten to taping everything up so no one tampers with it. And you test yourself and your loved ones at home. You know, the sad thing is my 14-year-old daughter, Kizzy, if you guys have ever read my book, Ultimate Gastric Sleeve Success, my Kizzy's Rule, she's 14 now. Kizzy's 14. She lives with her mom, my ex. And her her mom is was is crazy is really strict about social distancing. So she wouldn't let me hug my daughter from March until I got these tests at the end of July. I tested her. I tested me. We were both negative, and I hugged my daughter for the first. This is how we get over coronavirus. This is how we're not a prisoner. This is how we're not a prisoner, guys. It's self, it's testing. You have to self-administer. Someone has to stand up with the balls and says, dude, we don't have to be a prisoner to coronavirus. Okay. So let me get some questions here real quick. So I'll, I'll, I'll take your questions, get your questions ready about these kits, right? It's um, do it. Cause I'm going to work on a website where you can go and order these from me five for 500. But I would rather you buy it from me for forty for forty for fifty dollars each. Forty tests for fifty dollars each. That's two thousand dollars, and you keep ten for yourself and sell the other thirty. Keep ten for yourself, sell the other thirty for a hundred dollars each. That's three thousand dollars. You made a thousand dollars plus. You have ten tests for yourself. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? This is the side hustle. But you're saving the other person. Say, Dr. Vong, I don't, people won't buy for, they will, because if they go online, they find these for, for 150. You're saving them 50 bucks. And it's not even the fucking kit. They get this box with um, like, like with these big solution things. It's not an individual test, right? So sell it to them, five for 500, five for 500. Do that six times, five for 500, keep 10 for yourself. Do it eight times, I don't really care. Five for 500, do that eight times. Dr. Vong, I sold my 40, give me 40 more. Give me 80 more, let me double the order. This is how we get by it, through it. And do that before I put up my website and then people can go to my website and order them now, but I don't wanna do that, all right? So if you're interested in ordering, go to my, go to facebook.com, go to facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. And message me. Send me a message. Facebook.com, Dr. Vong. And I want you to specifically say, I want 40 tests. So I know that you want 40 tests. Not like, hey, I'm kind of interested. And then you you make me waste my time. Because then you're like, oh, my God, I didn't know it was going to be that much. Yeah. Yeah. It's an investment. It's a side hustle. You can totally do it. You can protect your family. 40, 40 tests, $50 each. That's 2000 Some people thought that I would get 40 tests for $50. Like, you, like what world do you live in? This is why our, our economy is so bad, right? So let me do some questions. Let me do some questions. Um, doo, 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 doo. The what ifs really messes with your head regarding COVID. Brittany, you are totally right. The website that um, I would design would say, you know, what's your status? What's your status, right? What's your status? You got to know your status because once you know your status, you're all good. You know, once I know I'm, I'm negative, I just tested, um, a couple, a few days ago on, on Facebook. So on like, I think Monday, Monday, I said, Oh gosh, it's been a week. I test about every two weeks. And then if, if we come into like a high risk situation, I retest, or if it's been a while, I retest, right? My neighbor, Tom, who I was telling you about that we share family units with, well, that sounds weird. 
but they're my neighbor and we babysit each other's kids, things like that. Like they just went to Louisiana, came back. I was like, you got to retest. I, I, you can't come over until you retest. Right. So, uh, do, 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 give me some questions. What about all the news? P two P pots like sequoia sequela. Uh, I don't know what the, what do you mean by pot? Do you mean potus or pots like P O T S? I'm not sure, but there there are there are things like like uh, long haulers. They have ongoing symptoms. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Uh, the ongoing sy symptoms: the mind fog, the tiredness, um, the decreased lung capacity, the cardiomyopathy. Like that's the heart. Um, inflammation, uh, heart dysfunction. Uh, we're seeing those, the lack of focus, the memory loss. Um, the, yeah, those are called long haulers and that's for real. And we don't know for sure. Um, uh, do you, how much profit do you make on each test? So if you buy 40 from me at $50, that's a $2,000 investment. You resell them for 500, you double your money. You resell them for a hundred dollars each. You double your money. That's what I would do. Um, or you can order five, five for five hundred for me if you like, right? Five for five. Oh, okay. Here we go. Postural orthostatic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but but a lot of things can cause that, right? That's where you're like you stand up too fast, you get lightheaded, or you bend over, you get lightheaded. Um, and and then and then you end up having like this this um, this racing heartbeat, you know. Uh, Matt, when are you gonna order, bro? April twenty twenty two. So the expiry. I'll, I'll actually show you. Here it is, right here. Expiration date. Do you see that? It says twenty twenty two oh four. That's the expiration date. Twenty twenty two oh four. COVID nineteen. IgG. IgM. Rapid test. So this is the antibody test. You get you get that in these kits, Matt. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. Not going to get political. You, you can. You can do it. Get, get a group together. If you think so, not true, though. Uh, more people in the United States have died from COVID in the last six months than the last five years of influenza. And so all the asshats who said that, you know, coronavirus is overblown is, and it's just, it's no worse than the, the seasonal flu, you're an idiot. It's not overblown. And that's shutting down the entire fucking country and basically the entire world. You're shutting down the entire world and you have a million people still dying. What's wrong with you? You are just so fucking eager. To, why are you do? What are you doing on my page? Get like get off my page. You know, like what's wrong with you? You're part of the problem. I want to get back to it too, man. Like I want to get back to a normal life. I want to chase my girlfriend around. You know, show her off at bars. Can't do it right now. You got to grow up. Um, so there is no FDA approved COVID tests. This is a novel chronic. There is zero, not even the nasal ones, not the oral ones. They are all under what's called the emergency use approval list, the EUA. So this test is on the EUA. And when you order from me or if you message me at my Facebook, Dr. Vong there, then I will, um, I'll send you the link to the CDC website that shows this list. I'll give you the brand and everything. Uh, that shows that it's on the EUA. There is no FDA approved COVID test. Exactly right, Geraldine. 50 each, minimum order 40. So it's $2,000. Um, way worse than the flu. Amy Kate Bread, long term watcher, follower. Uh, double your money or use it for yourself. That's it. EUA emergency use authorization. Exactly right. All right. Any other questions that I see? Let me see. Can you discuss the ramifications of the 10,000 minks that died from COVID? Don't know anything about that. Don't know anything about that. But this is a blood test. So you prick your finger. It's like it's just like checking yourself for your blood sugars if you're a diabetic. You you just small tiny prick on your finger. You don't even feel it. I put a band-aid in here, but you don't even need a band-aid. And then you put your little blood drop right into this well. 
then you drop the buffer solution into the bottom well and it gives you results in 10 minutes. Results in 10 minutes, all right? I gotta run, I'm cooking dinner. I'm making my world famous pot stickers for Erica tonight. Oh my God, they're so good guys, pot stickers. Oh, fresh, roll the wontons, you're gonna love it. All right, um, you don't have to buy 40 kits, but uh, if you want the $50 break, it's 40 kits. I sell you five for 500, five for 500. Kevin, Dr. Duck's a cool dude. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Pot stickers are dumb. How many different kinds of COVID tests there are? I'm going to talk about that. Uh, there are different antibody rapid tests, and then there's also different uh, nasal swab tests. There's a lot. There's a bunch. The EUA list is pretty long. It's pretty long. And then there's nasal swab, that's the PCR, there's antigen, there's the saliva. Um, so if you want to test, you got to message me on facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. I will create a website, but for right now, uh, message me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. All right. Thank you, Jardine. Appreciate you. Have a great night, everybody. If this, if this broadcast has been helpful, please hit share. And uh, please tag some people to watch it for me. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great night. I'll be back tomorrow, uh, probably around noon with another COVID, uh, COVID talk. Talk to you later. Bye. U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. I'm U.S. Talk to you later. Bye.